telling where we would be. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly want to uh, pray for men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved, and um, also pray uh, for uh, the community and the world, uh, that the Lord will uh, intervene in all situations and conditions, and then even in our own congregation, those that are going through, those Enduring, uh, what kind of ever suffering you may be enduring, that the Lord will bless yes. and uh, encourage your heart. Uh, if there be none other prayer request, we'd like to ask the church to stand. Thank you, Lord. Let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you blessed us and watched over us and kept us even to this very hour. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to strengthen our hearts and our minds and our spirit. Lord, continue to help us to grow in your grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, continue, Lord, to build us up. Build us up, Lord, as we endure all things that, uh, that we have to endure for your kingdom. And we ask you, Lord, that you bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to hinder. And Lord, allow your anointing, allow your free course of your word to have its free course. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, we certainly uh, thought that the Lord had dropped in our heart as even um, yesterday uh, that we should uh, even uh, teach and talk about even today. And I want you to go with me to um, Psalms 133. And we know that's the unity song. That's the unity song. Thank you, Jesus. And God wants us to have it. Amen. Even among ourselves and among others and with Him. And uh, that takes work. That takes work to have to have unity among ourselves and to have unity even with God, it takes work. And uh, the key is, is that the Lord will help us. Amen? The Lord will help us. And uh, really sending this message here out uh, to the body of Christ, to the body of Christ and even here which we are part of the body of Christ, our own assembly. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I hope we are part of the body of Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Elder, uh, uh, will you read for me uh, 133 and beginning with verse number one? Behold, yeah. how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh huh. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. So, these three scriptures here, uh, verses rather, are very powerful in nature. And the Lord starts out and he's saying, behold. And I often teach that that behold means take notice because something very rare and something very special is about to happen. That, that is generally uncommon. And the reasons why it is uncommon is because 
uh, when he's talking about unity here is because uh, oftentimes we don't function in the word of God. What I mean by that is God's word has been given unto us so that we can live it on a daily basis so that it can profit us, so that we can benefit from it. Uh, God has prescribed ways for which we um, ought to uh, treat one another and how we should treat God. And if we follow after God's prescribed way, his pattern, then we will have this unity. Because when he says, behold, notice how good and how pleasant it is, you know, for brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh, he's saying how, 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 how rare it is for brethren, body of Christ, I'm using the body of Christ in this aspect, uh, to actually come together in unity. Because the, the enemy wants to divide. The enemy wants to conquer. And um, uh, as we walk with God, and as we deal with one another, we are going to uh, have issues. We're going to have problems. Uh, this word unity deals with uh, not allowing, having some commonality. The commonality deals with, uh, I want to please God, and you want to please God. And we're willing to do whatever God says uh, in, that, in that vein so that we don't allow ourselves to be separated from him. And uh, uh, we have to look at it when it says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. First of all, you have to view God as your father. God, God is a father. When Jesus was, was introducing that concept, they, they knew that concept, but they haven't really heard it preached or heard it taught the way Jesus taught and referenced it. And, and they, they were literally offended at him because he called God his father. And, and, and God has always wanted his people to be a part of his family. That's why he called them the children of Israel. Because he looked at them as being uh, uh, their, his, his offspring, his children. Uh, and, and what I'm after here in saying that is this, is that every father wants their children to get along. Every father wants their children to be helpers of one another. Every father wants their children to reverence the father. And, and, and God is the same way, and even more, because he's worthy of it. <laughs> he's worthy of that. Amen? And, and as, 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 as children of God, and if we want to walk with God in the way that he has designed, we have to see ourselves as his children and be subject to him and be subject to his laws and to what he says, his word. Amen? I'm not saying anything new, but I'm trying to bring it into a new perspective. And, and we have to look at it like this, that everything, holiness, holiness is all relationship. If you can uh, uh, find a balance, in every relationship you have, you can be saved. And what I mean by that is, you have to serve God in the right way. And you have to serve one another in a right way. Amen? I can't uh, 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 say I love God and hate you. Amen? I can't do that. And I can't uh, uh, treat God right and then treat you wrong and then uh, believe that, that I'm saved. Amen. It's impossible. Even, even relationships on your job. Amen. On your job. You have to treat your boss right. You have to treat 
your co-workers right, uh, relationships in your household. Uh, the husbands got to treat the wives right. The wives got to treat the husbands right. The children got to treat the parents right. And the parents got to treat the children right. And even when it comes down to your enemies, it's all relationship. Uh, you got to treat your enemies right. Amen? Those that hate you, despise you, uh, you got to treat them right. Amen? So, so this unity, when he says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is, it's, it's dealing, uh, uh, when he says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to do what? To dwell together. Now, that, that, that concept of dwelling together is, is, is dealing with everything that God has said that we are responsible for doing. We do it. We live it. When you look at that word dwell and, and break it out and, and, and look at the root meaning of it in the Greek or in the Hebrew in this, in this sense, it means to live. It means to abide. And, and God has given us his word and uh, for us to live it out on a daily basis. And, and without, without our, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost, without our uh, 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 feedback, God doesn't ask us uh, what we feel about and how we feel about his word. He, he expects us to just carry it out, uh, live it out, and, and live in harmony with one another. God expects that. Amen? Now, uh, the enemy, he knows that, so he takes every opportunity he can to disrupt the unity. Amen? Uh, there's a scripture that talks about, uh, 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 it talks about endeavoring. Amen? Endeavoring uh, to keep the unity of the peace in the bond of what? Perfection. Amen? I want you to uh, 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 turn with me over to the, to the book of, of Matthew. Matthew chapter number 5. Hallelujah. Let me get with you. Matthew chapter number 5. And, and we want to really start reading at verse number 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh huh. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yes. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yes. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Here we go. This is how God wants us to keep unity. He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Now, uh, mercy deals with uh, extending to somebody something that they don't deserve. Amen? And, and when, when they have done you wrong, instead of you getting them or persecuting them, you set them free. You follow? And, and allow God to be the judge. Now, how does that work with unity? People are going to offend you. Amen? Amen? Am I right? Amen. And here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a news flash. You want to offend people. Amen? No matter how close the relationship is, no matter how distant the relationship is, offenses must come. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and the way God wants us to deal with the offense is to forgive. Am I right? 
If you forgive, your heavenly Father then will do what? Forgive you. Now, but when I talk about God's laws, that's, that's one of the prior laws that God has given us to keep the unity. He has given us his word to keep the unity. Amen? And, and we must abide in his word in order to allow unity to happen. And, and in other words, if, if my brother offend me, right, I don't, I don't go to somebody else and talk about the individual. Uh, in order to keep the unity, I ought to go to the other person to straighten it out, but not the other person, my bad. Uh, the person that, that, that offended you. <laughs> not the other. And I have to go to the person that offended me. Amen? And, 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 and straighten it out. Now, what God does not want you to do is to harbor those, those feelings and, and distrust and, and let those feelings of distrust uh, fester in your mind to where you praying to God, asking God to remove those feelings from you, uh, asking God to help you, give you grace, give you strength, so when you see the individual, uh, uh, you don't raise up or you don't turn away from the individual. Uh, uh, that's not the word of God. That's not what he said to do. Uh, that's why we don't overcome like that. Because that's not God's way of overcoming. God's way for you to overcome that hurt or that offense is to go to that individual. Huh? And, and reconcile with the individual. Then you'll see the grace of God enter in. Then you'll see the power of God help you and, and take away any ill feeling that you may have when you see the individual. Uh, I, I want you to hear me. It's not that uh, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. A lot of times we want to pull down those strongholds in, 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 in prayer. Nothing wrong with prayer. Nothing wrong with seeking God. Amen? But, but you pull down the stronghold in actuality by, by doing what God word have said to keep the unity. If you don't do that, then you can be praying uh, uh, all you want and, and never get anywhere uh, because uh, you didn't obey the word. Because you don't want to go talk to the individual. Because you're trying to avoid the situation. Thinking you're all spiritual and all strong, which you're not. What you're actually doing is exalting your thought above God's thought. You're actually saying, God, uh, I don't have to do it that way. I can just pray and seek you to, 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 to gain some victory and avoid doing what you said for me to do. Huh? And that's how, that's how come we got a lot of church hurt in the church. That's why we got a lot of issues in the church because we don't follow after God's prescribed way. But now listen, if, if, I, if, if I don't follow after that prescribed way and I try to cover it over, uh, a month go by, a year go by, and so forth and so on, uh, when, when the individual offends me again, that bitter root will spring up, uh, troubling, uh, and many will be defined. Amen? Why? Because, look, I'm going to try to hear me, all because I didn't go to that individual in the beginning uh, and, and let them know how I feel, uh, 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 what the offense was, uh, what the issue was, and, 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 and because I didn't do that, now I'm suffering over again. I'm suffering over again. Follow me? Now, that's not to say if you did that, the individual won't offend you again as, as sure as I'm standing here. They will. But if you did that, the, the next time 
you are able to go to that individual and, and tell him. Amen? Paul, Peter said, Lord, uh, how often shall I forgive my brother? Seven times? Jesus said seven times seven. Amen? And that's continual. Amen? As long as we are in these human bodies, we're going to offend somebody. Amen? And somebody is going to offend us. Amen? It's going to happen. Am I right? Offenses stop the unity. Amen? The enemy knows that. That's why he plays it up. Amen? Puts it in our heart. And then, you know, what, what we do, uh, uh, and, you know, and, and, and the pendulum swings both ways. Amen? Uh, 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 I do it myself. You know, we, 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 we try to over-spiritualize. We try to uh, come up with our own thoughts and our own ideas about it. And instead of focusing in on what does the Word of God say for me to do. Amen? Amen. If we focused on what the Word of God said to do, we'll have victory. Amen? I right, continue to read, Pastor. Uh, El Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Uh -huh. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, notice what he said. Blessed, happy, are those that seek to make peace. Uh, peace and unity go together. Amen. So, 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 if I, if I'm offended, uh, I should seek to make peace with the individual. Amen. If I'm hurt. I should seek to make peace. Amen? If I do that, what did I say? God is your what? Father. Am I right? Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called what? The children of God. The children of God. See how it connects? I have to pursue after and seek peace in all of my relationships. I know the Bible says, as much as life in you, what? Live what? Peaceably with all men. Now, that does not mean that you avoid situations. Uh, living peaceably with them. That does not mean that. Amen? It means once you have encountered the individual and, and, and you've let them know, right? And if you see that there's some Ah, uh, y'all ain't going to like me here. When you see that there's some, uh, uh, oh, thank you, Holy, Holy Ghost is good. When you see that there's some uh, lack of spiritual growth, I was going to use a different term, <laughs> but, but you see that there's some lack of spiritual maturity in there, you take that into account. And by you taking that into account, you live peaceably with them. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm saying this, let me say it over. You, you know that somebody's uh, not spiritually mature. Huh? And, and uh, 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 you see them acting a certain way. Uh, I got, I'm operating with a, a three-year-old. I don't expect a three-year-old to act like a six-year-old. So, so, so I'm not expecting that three-year-old, that six-year-old to, to live up here. Uh, because, because if I'm expecting them to live up here, then I'm going to be disappointed at all times. So, so I lower my expectation to live peaceably with them. Because I understand they got some, they got some deficiencies. Amen? They don't have a, a, a set of maturity going on. You follow? So therefore, I, I live peaceably with them. I don't, I don't, I don't allow them. Hallelujah to, to offend me because my expectation isn't there. Amen? Y'all with me? Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, God wants us uh, to, 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 to live peaceably uh, and be peacemakers. Amen? Be peace. 
peacemaker. He said, blessed, happy are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You're part of God's family. That's what the Father expects. Matt, are we? Ten. Uh -huh. Are they which are persecuted for righteousness' to sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and all right. persecute you, yeah. and shall say, Eat all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Yeah. Now notice what he said. He says you're blessed. Blessed are ye when men shall what? Revile you. That means talk about you. Right? And do what? And persecute you. And persecute you. People are going to do that. God says you're what? Blessed. Read. And shall say all men are evil against you. Say all kind of evil against you. Falsely for my sake. Uh-huh. Falsely for my sake. What does he tell you to do? Rejoice. Rejoice. Be happy. Huh? Don't disrupt the unity. Be happy. Don't fall out with the individual. Be happy. Huh? Be happy. Count it all joy. We ain't fall into diverse temptation. Because the commonality is you want a right relationship with God. The commonality is you want them to have a right relationship with God. So you won't yourself be a stumbling block. You won't allow yourself to be a stumbling block. Because you want to keep the unit by any means necessary. All right, read. Rejoice uh -huh. and be exceeding glad. Yes. For great is your reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Yes. And ye are the salt of the earth. Now notice. This is talking about unity. He said, you are the soul. You are the influence. You've got power. Use your influence. Use your power to bring about unity. Huh? In the body of Christ. You follow? The Holy Ghost flows when there's unity. The Holy Ghost flows when there's love. The Holy Ghost flows when there's forgiveness. The Holy Ghost flows when it's mercy. Those are all the attributes of God. Huh? And, and I can't call myself a, a child of God if I'm not allowing those attributes to flow within me. Attributes of God are long-suffering. The Holy Ghost flows when there's long-suffering. Huh? The Holy Ghost flows when there's that. The Holy Ghost flows uh, when there's forgiveness. Am I right? Then the Holy Ghost flow. Uh, isn't that what God desires? God forgave us, didn't he? Huh? Now, ought we not to forgive one another? Talk about unity in the church. Building, building unity in the church. And it's not something that just happens. Huh? It has to be intentional by, by its members. Negativity, it, it grows like a weed. You ain't got a plan, huh? But but unity is like a flower that has to be planted in the garden of your heart, huh? And it has to be nurtured, amen. It has to be a uh, uh, cultivated, am I right? And it has to be uh, cared after and sought after in order for it to uh, 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 to grow and blossom. Same way with unity, huh? Unity in the church has to be worked at. Amen? It has to be a common goal of all of its members. Not just one member, all of its members. Amen? And, and when there's something out of joint that, 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 that uh, all of its members should get concerned. Amen? When, 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 uh, notice, have it. Heaven itself rejoices. Huh? The angels stop and pause huh? over one soul that gets saved. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that, 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 that the Lord left the, 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 the 99 and went after the one. Amen. Huh? Why? Because it's concerned. We should be concerned about 
one another. Amen? In the same way that, that, that I'm not going to allow anything, as Paul said, to separate me huh, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We're talking about unity. Amen? We're talking about unity. Paul, uh, uh, the psalmist David said, Behold, huh, how, how pleasant, how good and how pleasant it is. So it's something that can be accomplished. Amen? It's something that has been accomplished. When we look, we were talking about it on yesterday. When we look at the book of Acts and the early church, they had unity. Why? Because they had all things common. Amen? We plead the same, don't we? <laughs> we have the same issues, don't we? Huh? Huh? We have the same fights and struggles. Amen? They go, so we got all things come with one another. And, and when we see the value and the need of, of going after unity as, as a collective group, you'll see it. And, and, and it would be beautiful. You follow me? All right, finish reading that, uh, Ellen. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But the salt had lost its savor. Uh huh. Wherewith shall it be salted? Yes. It is thenceforth good for nothing. Uh huh. But to be cast out. Yes. And to be tried on the foot of men. Ye are light of, your, of the world. Ye are light. Of the world. Yes. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Can't be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush. Uh huh. Yes. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Unity represents me shining my light. What light? The light of, of, of forgiveness. The light of togetherness. The light of helping. The light of letting my light shine to do what? Good works. God good works. Whatever God has ordained for me to do in, in daily living, that's what I should go after. I want y'all to hear me when I say that. Whatever God has said, that's why we read the Bible, isn't it? Uh, that's why we study the Word. Am I right? Uh, I study it, I read it, so I can live it uh, on a daily basis and perform what God has said. I can't make up my own scriptures. I can't make up my, my own way of living. Amen? I, I, I'll apply this uh, because I like it. I won't apply that because I don't like it. No, that's not God. Amen? We've got we've to gotta do what God's word says do and obey it. Amen? Now, let's go over here. We're almost done. Let's go over here uh, to Ephesians chapter number four. Talk about unity. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you waiting on me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ephesians chapter number four, verse number one. What's it say? Therefore, the prisoner, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Uh huh. I therefore, rather, excuse me. Yeah. The prisoner of the Lord. Yeah. Beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Now notice what Paul is saying. He said, "I therefore, myself a prisoner." Because I've been captivated by Jesus. We also ourselves ought to be captivated by Jesus. He's our Lord. He says, I beg you, I beg you, beseech, yes. uh, that you live a worthy lifestyle. Amen? That you walk in God's commandments. Amen? That you keep his ways. Amen? Yes. Notice. That he walk worthy of 
of your vocation, meaning your calling. God has called us. Huh? He's called us, each and every one of us. And, and we ought to walk worthy of that calling. Meaning that walking worthy of your calling simply means performing what God has prescribed for you to do. Amen? Uh, and, and what I'm talking about here is, in this Bible study, uh, living out God's commands, keeping his prescribed way, doing what God has, has ordained for you to do and not doing your own thing. We do that. We do our own thing. We do what we're comfortable with. Uh, we, we say what we're comfortable with. We act what we're comfortable with. Then, then what we do, we pray to God to, to help us uh, in our, in our uh, 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 hurtness, help us in our, our problems when uh, he has prescribed a way uh, for us to uh, uh, deal with our situation. God does not want you to avoid living. He doesn't want you to avoid people. Amen? Jesus ate with sinners and publicans. Uh, did uh, uh, The offensive people. He, he, he ate with them. And, and, and I'm sure they did some offensive things, but he didn't allow their offensive things to stop him from his mission, from his goal. Uh, people are going to do offensive things to you, but you can't allow be those people that are doing offensive things to you to stop the love of God from flowing to those individuals. You can't allow that to stop you from fulfilling the vocation wherewith you've been called. If I'm sure, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't particularly know her. Y'all know I don't know her. Uh, Mother Teresa. I'm sure if she was here uh, dealing with all those lepers, I'm sure she saw some vile things, some nasty things, amen? And, and I'm sure she uh, had to deal with it uh, in order to fulfill the mission that she wants to do. If I was a doctor, the last job I would get would be a colonoscopy doctor. Huh? That's, I, don't want, I don't want that. Huh? But, but, but they were called to do that, amen? And, and I'm sure you know, they, they take great pleasure, not in the mess, <laughs> thank you, Lord, but they take great pleasure in helping the individual. Now, I'm saying that like that for a reason. People are messy. Huh? People are messy. You got messy situations. You got messy conditions. But you should take pleasure in helping the individuals. Amen? God has assigned us. Huh? For, to, to be helpers one to another. When did that change? That didn't change. God has assigned us to be helpers one to another. Amen? And I should seek to help you huh? through your mess. Life is complicated. Situations are complicated. We complicate situations. We complicate life. Amen? But, but there's never a time where I should not uh, 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 exclude myself from walking in my vocation. Amen? Wherever God has called. Never a time. Amen? Now, go ahead. What's the Bible say? Verse, verse number uh, two. Go to two. Four and two. Yeah. With all holiness and meekness. Now notice, you've got to walk in your calling. Uh, God has called you. God has anointed you in this Bible study to be a peacemaker. And you've got to do it with all lowliness. Amen? Humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God. All souls belong to God. Vengeance belongs to God. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus, when that woman with the, uh, uh, that was brought to him, that was caught in the very act of adultery. He didn't say that she wasn't guilty. He said, where are thy accusers? Uh, he said, neither I do I accuse thee. Uh, he said, go uh, in peace and sin no more. 
Amen? Uh, why? Because Jesus didn't come to this world to condemn people. He came to save them. Amen? We're not here to condemn people. We're here to save people, to help people. Amen? I'm talking about unity in the church, in the body of Christ. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now notice, he says, endeavoring uh, uh, with all holiness and what? And meekness. Now that word meekness there, it really means, we have a misconception of that word. That word meekness means that you submit yourself to the word of God. Uh, that, that if it tells you to be strong, you be strong. Uh, if the word is calling for you to, to humble yourself, you humble yourself. Whatever God's word says, God, God's word is calling for you to, 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 to forgive, you don't want to forgive, that word meekness means you submit uh, to whatever God's word has said. That's meaning me. It ain't, it ain't going around letting everybody walk over you. It's, it, meekness deals with you performing the word of God in spite of how you feel. Amen? I'm teaching here today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do what God's word has said. God's word doesn't want you to backbite. Amen? We ought not be backbiting on one another. Amen? We ought not be talking about one another. You follow? Thank you, Lord. Uh, you know, whatever goes on in your house, I'm sure you don't go around to everybody else's house uh, and, and get on the phone and talk about it. Amen? I'm sure you don't do that. You keep, you keep your situation, your situation. Uh, so, so why would you go out and spread gossip uh, or, 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 it can be fact. <laughs> it ain't necessarily got to be gossip, but, but, but it ain't, it ain't, it ain't good. It ain't pleasant. Huh? It's not fruitful. Huh? Why, why run around and talk about that? Huh? Thank you, Lord. Why do that? You see, that, that disturbs the unity. That's what the enemy wants. There's no fruit in that. Huh? There's no, there's no joy in that. There's no spirit in that. There's no anointing in that. Huh? There's no anointing in that. There's no power in that. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Now notice what he said. He said, with all lowliness and meekness, read, what's that? With long suffering. Now notice, long suffering, attributes of God, which represents attributes of unity. Huh? Everybody is not spiritually mature. We've got deficiencies. We've got issues. But because you've got deficiencies and issues, my, my goal, my unified goal is to live with you peaceably. Amen? That's my goal. So then I've got to allow for your deficiency. I've got to allow for your issues. And you've got to allow for my deficiencies. You've got to allow for my issues. Why? Because we all try to make it into heaven. Huh? That's the goal. We're all trying to please the Father. Amen? I'm sure you don't want your children arguing and fighting and bickering with one another. Huh? Cussing one another out. Thank you, Lord. You don't want that. I know you don't want that. Thank you, Lord. You don't want that. Huh? So, so why would that be in the body of Christ? Huh? That should not be in the body of Christ. Huh? Somebody got to be the bigger person. Somebody got to have a greater understanding. Somebody has to be, as the scripture says, me. Submit themselves to the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Notice what he says. He says, with all loneliness and meekness and what? With long suffering. Long suffering. Read. Forbearing one another in love. And that's putting up with one another. That's the Bible. This is how unity happens. If you want to look for a definition of unity, it's, it's, it's these literally 
three verses in this, in this chapter. You got to forbear one another. Notice, he says forbear one another in love. God is love. Amen? Love beareth all things. It hopeth all things. It endureth all things. Amen? Love never fails. Uh, it covers a multitude of faults. It covers a multitude of sins. It covers. Uh, so, so I've got to uh, uh, bear with you. Uh, how? In love. That's the way God's word has said. Now, <laughs> you can try to mount the clouds and get God to change his mind. God ain't going to change his mind. His word is settled. So if you want to make it in, you have to do this. You've got to see the need for unity and go after it. Huh? And maintain it. All right, read. What's it say? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now notice what it says. I like this verse. It says, endeavoring. Read that verse again, Pastor. Endeavoring uh -huh. to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, it, it has a connotation of meaning, that word endeavoring means to attempt to pursue after, to attempt, to pursue after, to seek, to seek out. I got issues with you. You got issues with me. I seek out the means, the ways for us to be reconciled, for us to be unified. For us to, as the scripture says, walk together in love. I seek it out. I humble myself. That's what that word endeavoring means. It means to seek out, to apply the attempt, to make the effort. If you draw nigh to God in this way, God will draw nigh to you. Endeavoring, because there's always going to be offenses. Even when you crack that situation, something else is going to happen. It's relationship. Holiness is relationship. I can't stress that enough. And, and in relationship, you build bridges. Sometimes the bridges get burned. Sometimes then when the bridges get burned, you gotta reconstruct. You gotta rebuild. You gotta reestablish. You gotta renew. You gotta revive. Amen? Sometimes you just gotta let it go and start all over. Huh? Relationship. Amen? Relationship. Now, in this relationship, uh, in the body of Christ, you never let go. You never let go. You never let go. You never let go. You endeavor, always endeavoring. You always are attempting. You always are going after it. Because it's what God desires. It's what God loves. It was, it's what God wants. Not what, necessarily what I want. Huh? Not necessarily what you want. But what in 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 uh, Lord help me here? What 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 does it matter in holiness? What I want? When did God say, "Well, Frank, I'm on I'm on build I'm on build a house. I'm on I'm on I'm on save it, but I want to know what you want first. God ain't did that. God has already established huh? the the way of holiness. Amen. God has already established the way that we should reconcile and have unity one to another. Huh? And, and who are we to question God in, in what he has established? You follow me? So that's why I've always got to go after it. I got I to gotta always pursue it. That's what Paul is saying. Because he knows 
that 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 in 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 from his own personal from his own personal words he persecuted the church amen he slaved he slaved uh, 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 and was consenting to the death huh, of Stephen that thing haunted him he preached about it he talked about it often and people were afraid of him but look who was who was the unified Barnabas the son of consolation he vouched for him so that the others <laughs> wouldn't receive him but I'm sure they kept their eye on him for a while huh? until they themselves came to a point where they felt that they could uh, uh, how can you say it? Trust them. Father, well, we have to we have to approach this thing in according to the word of God. If I got issues, I've got to approach it to how God's word said to resolve. Again, I can't pray about it. I can't fast about it and not do it. Let me say that again. You can have issues with somebody. You can have problems. Uh, 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 not even with somebody. Doing something that you know you should do. You praying and fasting, seeking God, hoping God would change and move. Uh, hoping God will uh, 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 bless the relationship or open the door. God is not going to do that until you obey what he says. That's the key. Obedience. You can want to lose a hundred thousand pounds and, <laughs> and, and you sitting on your knees praying and yet you still doing the same thing you, you, you do it. Eating up everything in sight. Not doing the necessary things, exercising, and doing things right. You ain't going to get no victory. I know that's bad English. You ain't getting victory huh? by, by, by not doing. God give you the strategy. He, and that's his word. He told us what to do. If we want victory, huh, then we've got to do what he said. And that's how you gain victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I want certain things to change. And if I ain't making efforts in changing the things, I'm just praying. I'm just, I'm just seeking and asking God. Because I know if you praying, seeking and asking God, God giving you strategies. And if you don't put those strategies in place, ain't nothing going to change. God has given us his word. If we're not operating according to his word in long suffering, forbearing, uh, enduring, uh, we won't have what God desires. Notice what he said. Read what he said. Endeavoring. Now notice. To keep it. In order to keep it, there, it, 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 it must have been established before. And when we cry out our Father, we love everybody. We unified with everybody. Even our enemies. God, at that moment, has unified you. Reconciled you. Right? Then life happens. And in order for me to maintain that, to keep that, I have to endeavor. I have to struggle with humbling myself and walking in the word of God. Now I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. God's word is given to us to keep unity. How do you keep it? By being obedient to the word of God. 
Let me say that again. How do you keep unity? By being obedient to the word of God. That's how you keep it. Doing what God's word says. Not overlooking. Not, not doing what I want to do. But doing what God's word. Humbling myself. Submitting myself to what God's word says. Do that. And, and you know, one of the problems with that is, uh, uh, you know, we got fear, uh, we got resentment, we got, we got, we got a whole lot of uh, hatred, you know what I mean? And all that stuff is not of God. That's not of God. That's of the enemy. That's of the devil. When should I ever want to see you fail? Huh? You know, I'm going to say this. Your children see you got uh, millions of dollars. They get into financial trouble. They don't like you. They want to see you die. That ain't love. Is that love? No, that's greed. And You got millions of dollars. They get into trouble. They come to you and ask for help. That's love. Am I right? That's love. We've got a whole lot of issues. We've got a whole lot of problems. We should come to one another and ask for help. We are obligated to help one another, not hurt one another. We are obligated to love one another, huh? not backbite on one another, not talk about one another. Amen? We're obligated to do that. Now notice, notice what it says. It says, endeavoring to do what? Keep the unity of the spirit uh -huh. in the bond of peace. Now, I said earlier that God dwells in unity. The Holy Ghost moves in unity. Y'all with me? When we are operating in the word of God, there's unity. God gets in the mix. When we operate in forgiveness, when we operate in mercy, when we operate in love, God gets in the mix. Amen? Uh, when we operate in long suffering, when we operate in forbearing one another, God gets in the mix. When we operate in not allowing an offense to, to harbor and to fester within us, wherein now I'm thinking evil. Huh? God, 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 God gets in the mix. 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 Notice. Notice what he said. Endeavoring to keep the unity. Of the spirit. In the bond of peace. Now notice. What binds it together. Unity together. Is peace. Pursuing after peace. And. And. In order to pursue after peace. There has to be negotiation. You can't have peace with your enemies. I'm speaking of enemies in the church. Your brothers or sisters. I'm just saying that, like that. You can't have peace with them without negotiation. Even the world knows that. They have summits where they try to come together. Huh? And try to bring about peace. But what God is talking about here is you coming together with your brother or your sister and negotiating.
associate in that bond to keep unity together. And it has to be negotiation. It has to be communication. When God, when he encountered, a, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Abel, right? He, well, we can even bring it back. When he encountered Adam and Eve in the garden, huh? he came to them in the cool of the day. He was angry with them, right? How many of you believe that? Yeah, but he came to them to negotiate. No, he knew what they did. He knew where they were. He started dialogue. He said, Adam, where are you? Where you at? Huh? What's going on? You follow me? Amen. And then Adam, he tried to blame him. Y'all know the story. Huh? But God, even in all of that, he dealt with them according to where they are. Huh? And he forgave them. Didn't he? But he negotiated with them first. And then he did forgave. Why? He was pursuing peace. Even with Cain. Cain slew his brother Abel. God came to Cain in negotiation. Huh? Y'all with me? Do y'all see that? Came to him, talked to him. Huh? Find out what's up. Wait, what, where's your brother? What you do to him? Now notice. Cain was rebellious. He got smart with God. Am I right? He didn't have a mind to reconcile with God. So, his punishment was a mark. And he was cast away from God's presence. Why? Because he failed to reconcile. Paul said, what shall separate us from the love of God? <laughs> I'm not going to allow somebody's offense to separate me from the love of God. Don't allow somebody's offense to separate you from the love of God. The Bible says, be not deceived. Huh? God is not mocked. Amen? God knows what's in your heart. Amen? God knows what's in your heart. Amen? And he said, how dwelleth the love of God in you? Huh? And, and you don't, you say you love God, but hate your brother. Hate your sister. Hmm? Y'all with me? Now notice what he said. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit, and that the spirit there is capitalized, which represents uh, 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 the Holy Ghost uh, in the bond of peace. What should bind you together with the Holy Ghost is peace. The Holy Ghost, it reconciles. <laughs> I'm teaching up here. God has, has given us the ministry of reconciliation. If we want to say that the Holy Ghost is leading us, then we can surely say that it's leading us to reconcile. Isn't that the job of the Holy Ghost? A comforter. Huh? Spirit of truth operates in the Word of God. If I have the Holy Ghost, and it's leading me, and I'm bonded with the Holy Ghost, it's going to lead me into reconciliation with my brother or my sister. Amen. This is what that scripture means. 
It's going to lead me into it. It's going to endeavor. It's going to find a way. It's going to empower me. Huh? When I make up in my mind, it's going to empower me. If I seek a way, it's going to show me the Holy Ghost. It's going to open it up. It's going to give me, because it's the word of truth, it's going to give me the word what to say. Because the Holy Ghost, if man, I don't feel like teaching now, in, in the book of uh, 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 the epistles of John, it tells you what bears record in heaven. And what bears record here on this earth. And the Spirit, the Holy Ghost is there. Bearing record. The Holy Ghost knows what's the mind of God. So the Holy Ghost will always lead me into reconciliation. Read, what does it say? There's one body. There's one body. And one spirit. One spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Now, he, he's further responding to unity. It's all one. We're all one. We're all in one body. Huh? You know, uh, when you, you deal with people that have strokes, you deal with people that have TBIs, brain, uh, traumatic brain injuries, things like that, and um, they, they walk with a limp, you know, and um, they're trying to control their body. And then you see them have anger management issues. Even people that are deaf, can't uh, uh, mute, can't communicate. You see a level of frustration. You see anger management problems. Why? Because their body is not functioning or operating the way it should be. You see a church uh, with a lot of dysfunctional uh, uh, anger, a lot of dysfunctional uh, members. Why? Because it's not operating or functioning the way it should be. You see that? If we were to study even in this book of uh, 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 Galatians or Ephesians, it talks about he gave some for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Do we all come to uh, the knowledge of God? Amen? Do we all come to that? Amen? Unity of faith. The knowledge of the Son of God. And that can only happen when we all function and operate the same way. We're coming full circle now. That's why he said, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together, to live together in this unity. It means something, but it's got to be sought after. Now notice, notice, let's go back over there. Come down to my conclusion. Let's go back over to Psalms 133. Can you read that again, Pastor? Behold. Behold. How good and pleasant, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now notice, he says, Behold, take notice how good and how pleasant it is. So that means that it can happen. For brethren to do what? Dwell together in unity. And we learned that that word dwell means to live, to abide together in unity. Oneness. Read. It is like the precious ointment upon the head uh -huh. that ran down the beard. Yeah. Even Aaron's beard. Now notice, God's saying it's like, like, like when I said that he gets in the midst of it, he anoints it. Uh, 
We can be a great anointed body of Christ. It's like the precious anointing. Read. It is like the precious ointment up on the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, uh -huh. that went down to the skirts of his garment. Mm, God loved it when uh, Moses anointed Aaron. To, now, he's choosing Aaron as, as a symbol of ministry. Unity comes about through ministry. You have to see yourself, what he's referring here, as being anointed to bring about unity. Not disunity, but to bring about unity. See yourself carrying the glory or the balm in Gilead that's necessary, the healing, the deliverance, the forbearance that's needed, the negotiation that's needed to bring about unity. See yourself as that. You won't let nothing separate you. All right, read. As the Jew of Hermit, mm -hmm. and as the Jew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, yeah. for there the Lord commanded the blessing. Now notice, when you operate in unity, God will command a blessing. God will command a blessing. When you endeavor to keep unity, God will command a blessing. Now you know there were two mountains. The one mountain represented the blessings. The other mountain represented the cursing. The ones that ended up on the cursing were those that were disobedient. Those that ended up on the blessing was the ones that follow after the Lord. Read that last verse, then we're done. As the Jew of Hermon, and as the Jew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Now, my final note. Agree to help others to reach their goal. Keep yourself <laughs> unspotted by the flesh. What I mean by that is this. Unity is really accomplished by me helping you and you helping me. And it's accomplished by me keeping myself unspotted. It's accomplished by you keeping yourself unspotted. Workers together. Workers together. Workers together. We certainly thank God for this Bible study on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And I praise God. I hope that you've received something here tonight. God, God, God is trying to help us. And we ought to allow God to help us. We ought to allow God to help us. We thank God for our viewers on tonight. We pray that you uh, sow a seed into the kingdom. And we'll see you next Wednesday. In Jesus' name, amen.